Good morning, everyone. This is Daniele Capezzone, a view from Italy, the Watcher Post from the Utopia Studios in Rome. We all know what has been happening this week between Israel and Hamas, the terrorist group. Uh, Hamas decided to launch uh, several rockets against Tel Aviv, and of course there was a retaliatory action, uh, several airstrikes decided by the government led by Prime Minister Netanyahu, who said from the very first moment that Hamas would be paying a high price for their attacks. As it always happens in circumstances like that, several countries, uh, international bodies, third parties, uh, urged both sides to de-escalate the feud and appealed for calm. But the feeling is that now diplomats can do very little and we are on the verge of a war in Gaza. Yesterday, Israeli forces announced the possibility of a boots-on-the-ground operation that might last as long as necessary. We will see what's going to happen. As far as I'm concerned, I can make five remarks on that situation. The first one is, please, don't focus on the details of the situation. Look at the bigger picture and at the deeper causes of the conflict. Second, Hamas knew and knows very well what Israel's red lines were and are and the consequences of crossing that red lines. Third, Israel has full right to defend itself and its citizens. Fourth, it's quite unacceptable to make a sort of moral equivalence between Israel and Hamas, between a democratic state, the only democracy in the region, and a terrorist group. But the most important remark from my perspective is the last one, the geopolitical one. Let's look at the bigger picture. You know very well that during the Obama administration, when the vice president was Joe Biden, Obama's assumption was to have Tehran, to have the Iranian Ayatollah, Ayatollahs as their key players in the region. Uh, Obama's assumption was, let's try to engage and, embra and uh, embrace Tehran um, in that way, we will convince them to stop their nuclear program and they will convince them not to poison the whole region. Unfortunately, that political bet was disgracefully lost by the Obama administration. Uh, the Ayatollahs got plenty of American money and with that money they went on with their nuclear program, and they went on poisoning the whole region, from Yemen to Syria, from Lebanon to Iraq. Donald Trump decided to turn over a new leaf and to have two key players in the region. On the one hand, Jerusalem, of course. On the other hand, and it was a wise choice from our perspective, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, as the most important Arab player and as a stabilizing force in the region. And from that choice made by Donald Trump came the uh, uh, Abraham Accord peace agreement as the opportunity to turn over a new leaf in the area. Unfortunately, during the first month of the new American administration, Joe Biden gave different signals. On the one hand, he opened a controversy with Riyadh about the disgraceful and horrible assassination of the journalist Kasaji. On the other hand, he said, OK, but we have to go on with the Abraham Accord peace agreement. But Tehran, Iran, perceived a, a sort of uncertainty, perceived some weakness, and tried to test this weakness and to test this uncertainty. Uh, we all understand that it is quite unlikely that Hamas, which is a proxy of Tehran, may have decided an action like that against Israel without getting not only uh, weapons and rockets, but also a political green light from Tehran. So that's the key element you have to, to keep in mind. Then there is also the role played by 
Erdogan, which is going to make things even worse. But the key point now, on Friday, is that we should do whatever we can to uh, protect and assume the strategy of the uh, um, Abraham Accord peace agreement as something that should pave the way for a new situation in the region. It would be a terrible mistake if that, uh, uh, due to this situation, we were to sideline that kind of strategy. That's all for now. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. See you next Friday. Thank you.